Okay. Dear Lord, thank you. Thank you for today. It's beautiful. And I'm at the cross, putting all the sins that I've sinned, even the ones I don't know about. I know I sinned. Cleanse my heart, make it pure. Please. Doing the devotions now, so give us something that will stick to us and get us through another one of your beautiful days. That's just in your blessing name. Amen. Okay. Tuesday, June 23rd. Rest and refresh. Jesus stood and cried out, saying, If anyone thirst, let him come to me and drink. John 7:37. There were nuns, monks, hermits, and ascetics. They were known as the Desert Fathers, or Desert Mothers, or nuns. Beginning with Anthony the Great, who moved to the Middle East desert around A.D. 270. Thousands of others followed in his footsteps, seeking spiritual purity, enlightenment, solitude, and perfection. The pattern of Retreating contributed to today's practice of taking a retreat to refresh oneself spiritually. Thankfully, it's not necessary to retreat to the desert or a mountaintop, either temporary or permanently, to find spiritual refreshment. Jesus said if we would but come to him for living water, or for rest. We would find it in abundance. We can create that place of rest in a place of prayer, or Bible study, or meditation, or worship. Anywhere we can retreat from the cares and businesses of life. When we turn over those cares to God in prayer through Christ, his peace will guide our hearts and minds. If you can retreat to a serene spot in nature, wonderful if that's not possible. Retreat with Jesus whenever you can. He will meet you there. You made us for yourself, O oh Lord, and our hearts are restless till they rest in you. Augustine. Eternal Inheritance by Brian Kepper, Tuesday, June 23rd, 2020. Scripture reading, Hebrews 9, 15 to 22. For this reason, Christ is the meditator of a new covenant that those who are called may receive the promise eternal inheritance, Hebrews 9.15. When we think of an uh, inheritance, we usually think about something a person received from a relative or a friend who has died. The inheritance is given as part of the deceased person's last will and testament. Hebrew tells us that as a result of Christ's death, those who are called may receive the promise eternal inheritance. This inheritance is the eternal salvation and eternal redemption we heard about earlier in Hebrews 5, 9 and 9 to 12. Some people have described the new covenant in Christ in terms of a vast will and testament. In some ways, the language used here in Hebrews sounds like that of a last will and testament, especially when it talks about an inheritance. In order for someone to receive an inheritance, 
a person has to have died. For us to receive the promised eternal inheritance, Jesus died for our sake. The idea of inheritance is tied to death. It's not only for the new covenant. In the old covenant, there was also death. The death of sacrificed animals. Now that Christ has died for us, he has established a new covenant in his blood so that we can receive the promise, eternal inheritance. Think of it because of Jesus' death for our sake. We have eternal life with him as our inheritance. And in Christ, a new life begins even now. Lord, God, thank you for the inheritance of eternal life with you because of Jesus' death for us. Amen. June 23rd, Light of the World. Then God said, Let there be light. And there was light. And God saw the light, that it was good. And God divided the light from the darkness. Genesis 1, 3 and 4. Physically speaking, there is one light of our world, the giant star we call the sun. The sun is so dominant in the life of planet Earth that it was worshipped by some ancient cultures. In the third millennium BC, the Egyptians worshipped Ra, the god of the sun, from whom all life was supposed to have originated. Jesus' words about the light of the world were radically different. He told his disciples that they were the light of the world. But instead of the world worshiping his disciples as some sort of divine light, the disciples' light had a singular focus to reveal the glory of God. And there was another unique slant on the spiritual light. It was not the disciples themselves, but their good works that would cause the world to focus on God. Just as John the Baptist came to bear witness of the light, which is Christ, that all through John might believe, so we are to bear witness to the reality love and grace of God by our good works done in his name. Think about that today. You and your Christ-like actions can cause someone to see reality of God. Pray that your light will reveal God's glory. June 23rd. Abraham, and the scripture was fulfilled, which says, Abraham believed God, and it was accounted to him for righteousness, and he was called the friend of God, James 2, 23. We can imagine a child writing an appropriate and sentimental memoir about her perfect father understanding that perfect was not intended to be taken literally. But how about a book entitled The Righteous Father? The patriarch Isaac could have written that book about his father Abraham. Righteous doesn't mean sinless, of course. We know that Abraham wasn't perfect, but he did manifest some qualities that every father should emulate. First, he believed the promises of God in the future God had planned for him. And when he believed God, God accounted it to Abraham for righteousness. Again, not perfect or sinless, 
but in a right standing with God. Second, as a result of Abraham's trust in God, he became a friend of God. Could any parent set a better example to his children or grandchildren than being friends with God? Living in right standing with God, that means communing with him, walking with him, living for him, and above all, trusting him and his promises. Follow Abraham's example as a faithful parent by dispensing your friendship with God. Second Corinthians 2. So I made up my mind that I would not make another painful visit to you. For if I grieve you, who is left to make me glad when you whom I have grieved? I write as I did so that when I came, I should not be distressed by those who ought to make me rejoice. I had confidence in all of you that you would all share my joy. For I wrote you out of great distress and anguish of heart and with many tears, not to grieve, not to grieve you, but to let you know the depth of my love for you. If anyone has caused grief, he has not so much grieved me as he has grieved all of you, to some extent, not to put it too severely. The punishment inflicted on him by the majority is sufficient for him. Now instead, you ought to forgive and comfort him so that he will not be overwhelmed by excessive sorrow. I urge you, therefore, to reaffirm your love for him. The reason I write you was to see if you would stand the test and be obedient in everything. If you forgive anyone, I also forgive him. And what I have forgiven, if there was anything to forgive, I have forgiven in the sight of Christ for your sake, in order that Satan might not outwit us, for we are not aware of his schemes. Now, when I went to Terrace to preach the gospel of Christ and found that the Lord had opened a door for me, I still had no peace of mind because I did not find my brother Titus there. So I said goodbye to them and went on to Macedonia. But thanks be to God who always leads us in triumphant procession in Christ and through us spreads everywhere the fragrance of the knowledge of him. For we are to God the aroma of Christ among those who are being saved and those who are perishing. To the one, to the one we are, the smell of death, to the other, the fragrance of life. And who is equal to such a task? Unlike so many, we do not peddle the word of God for profit. On the contrary, in Christ we speak before God with sincerity like men sent from God in love and memory of Dorothy E. Taylor, July 11th, 1926 to July 6th, 2014. God saw you getting tired and a cure was not to be. So he put his arms around you and whispered, come with me. With tearful eyes, we watched you and saw you pass away. Although we loved you dearly, we could not make you stay. A 
Golden heart stop beating, hard working hands at rest. God broke our hearts to prove to us He only takes the best. Dear Lord, thank you for these devotions. Thank you for showing us righteousness, reminding us of Abraham and Isaac. And naturally, Paul on this missionary trip over to Macedonia from Titus. Lord, I'm asking the wisdom to be poured out on my family so that they will spend the day in your presence, being pure. I'm also asking you to pour out your wisdom on not only my classmates, but every classmate that is in school today and their extended families so that they can stay in your presence today, close to you. And Lord, for those on Facebook that I call my friends, your extended families, Please pour out your wisdom on all those people so that they can stay in your presence also. And as for me in that swimming pool that you blessed me with, thank you. It's an honor swimming in that new wisdom every minute. Feels good. It's been a few days since I went to that. No, no place. <laughs> Thank you. Lord, be with us now as we go through another one of your beautiful days. Give us guidance. Guidance to stay with you in your presence. And I ask all these things in your blessed name. Amen. Okay, have a beautiful day.